Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math tutorial for you guys. First, I want to excuse the lighting if it's a little bad. It's kind of gloomy outside today, but I really needed to get this video filmed today. So I'm using the lights inside of my office. So if the lighting seems a little bit off, that's why. Secondly, you're probably going to hear Genesis in the background a lot because she's really hyper for today for some reason we don't know why but so if that little jingling sound that you hear that is Genesis in the background but anyway today we're going to talk about lesson 6.6 .6. and in lesson 6.6 .6, we're going to be looking at how do you add or subtract two fractions that have unlike denominators and in this lesson we're going to take everything that we've learned in chapter 6 so far in terms of prime factoring finding equivalent fractions creating like denominators and that's all going to start to be combined so that we can add two fractions that have unlike denominators or we can subtract two fractions that have unlike de denominators as you guys know you cannot add fractions nor subtract them if they have two different denominators so you have to fix that problem before you can go on to add or subtract two fractions so as always i'm going to offer you guys a few examples we're going to do some adding and we're going to do some subtracting and then i will give you some closing thoughts for this video so i'll see you in just a few seconds all right in this example we are going to be adding two fractions we are adding one fourth plus three eighths and right away you should recognize that as they stand you cannot add these two fractions together because they have um, unlike denominators this one has a denominator of four this fraction has a denominator of eight so we know that we have to switch uh, we have to change that so that they have common denominators. So the first strategy that we're going to use is just one where you are looking for a common denominator. Not necessarily the least common denominator, but just a common denominator. And the easiest way to just find a common denominator is to take your two denominators, which is in this case 4 and 8, and mul multiply them together. So I know that 4 times 8 is 32 because that is a basic fact. So as a little note, I'm going to tell myself that my common denominator for this problem would be 32. That means I now need to go back and manipulate each of these fractions so that their denominator does read as 32. So I'm going to look at 1 fourth first. I'm going to rewrite it down here in red for you guys. I'm also going to draw my fraction bar a little bit longer because I know I'm going to be doing some multiplying so that I can have a denominator of 32. So I'm going to rely on my basic facts. I'm going to ask myself, 4 times what is going to be 32? I know that 4 times 8 is going to be 32. Whatever I multiply the denominator by, I must also multiply the numerator by. So now I'm going to take 1 times 8, which is going to be 8, and 4 times 8, which is going to be 32. So now instead of dealing with 1 fourth, I'm going to be dealing with a new fraction, 8 over 32. And we know that this is an equivalent fraction. So the value of these two fractions is the same. Just like I told you guys when we were just learning how to create equivalent fractions, think of this as me on Monday wearing one outfit, and this is me on Tuesday wearing a different outfit. I'm still the same person, I just look different because I'm wearing a different outfit. So now we're going to use 8 over 32 instead of 1 fourth. And I'm going to do the same with 3 over 8. I need to change my denominator in that fraction so that the 8 can be read as 32 or so that my denominator now is 32. Again, I'm going to use my basic facts. I know that 8 times 4 is going to equal 32. Whatever I multiply my denominator by, I must also multiply my numerator by. So I'm going to multiply 3 times 4. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out. So now I have 3 times 4, which is 12, and 8 times 4, which is 32. So instead of 3 eighths, I'm going to be working with the fraction 12 over 32. Notice that this denominator matches that denominator, which now means I can add them. So I'm going to keep these two fractions in mind, and I'm going to rewrite my new uh, addition problem. 8 over 32 plus 12 over 32. So now here is going to be my new addition problem. I'm going to be adding 8 over 32 plus 12 over 32. Since I know my denominator is going to be 32, it's not going to change right now. I like to rewrite the problem as 8 plus 12 over 32. Then this just becomes a very basic addition problem. 8 plus 12 is going to be 20. 
and 32 is going to be my denominator. Now before I finish and box my answer, put a star by it or put a happy face by it, I'm gonna look at this and ask myself, is that fraction in simplest form? In other words, does this, do these two numbers have any common factor besides the number one that can go into both 20 and 32? And you should recognize that yes, they do. Four can go into both of these numbers. I know that 20 divided by four is going to be five. And I know that 32 divided by four is going to be eight. And then just to be sure, I'm gonna ask, is that in simplest form? And I know that it is because five is a prime number. So these two, my numerator and my denominator, do not have a common factor besides the number one. Therefore, my final answer that I can box up is going to be five over eight because that is my answer in simplest form. Now I'm gonna do the same problem, the same original problem with you, but this time I'm gonna show you how you can use the strategy where you are looking for the least common denominator to add or subtract two fractions with unlike denominators. Okay, again, so in this problem we're gonna be adding one fourth plus three eighths, and this time I wanna make sure just right off the bat, I want the least common denominator because I wanna be as close to getting my answer in simplest form as soon as possible. So I'm gonna use that strategy. So when I'm looking for the least common denominator, I know that the first thing I wanna do is I wanna prime factor my two denominators. So I'm gonna prime factor four. I know that two times two is four, and I also know that both of these are prime factors, so there's nothing else that I can do for that. So therefore, my factors for the number four are gonna be two times two. Now I'm gonna move on and I'm going to prime factor eight. My two factors for eight are four times two. I know that two is prime, so I'm gonna circle that. And then I'm gonna break down four as two times two. Those are prime, so I'm also gonna circle those and there's nothing else I can do there. So my factors for eight were two times two times two. Now you're gonna look at both of your factor lists and you're gonna look to see if you can pair up two numbers and then see if there's any lonely numbers left. So I know here these two can be paired up and that will count as one two. These two twos can be paired up and that will count as one two. And then you have this little lonely two all by itself there. So to find my least common denominator between four and eight, I'm going to do two times two times two. Two times two is four, and four times two is eight. So my least common denominator is going to be eight. And I wanna keep that in mind, so I'm gonna write that up here. I like to do that just so that I never forget. My LCD, or my least common denominator is eight, and then I'm gonna manipulate my original fractions so that they do have a denominator of eight. So I'm gonna take one fourth. I'm gonna draw my fraction line a little bit longer because I know I'm gonna be multiplying. And I'm gonna ask myself, okay, if my least common denominator is eight, what would I multiply four by so that I do have eight? That would be two. So I'm gonna do four times two. Whatever is done to the denominator must be done to the numerator. So I'm going to do one times two. So my answer to that would be two eighths. Instead of one fourth, I'm dealing with two eighths. Miss Robinson's wearing one outfit on Monday, but now she's wearing that outfit on Tuesday. These are the same fraction, just dressed differently. Now I wanna do the same thing for three eighths. So here I had three eighths. I know my LCD is eight, and lucky for me, the denominator in that fraction was already eight. So there is nothing that needs to be done to three eighths. If you really wanted to, you can multiply it by one, that's just fine, but you'll still end up with three eighths. So now, instead of adding one fourth plus three eighths, I'm going to be adding two eighths plus three eighths. So let me move this out of the way so I can show you that. But again, on your work, this is all still gonna be present. You wouldn't erase that. Okay, so now you have uh, the new problem, which is going to be two eighths plus three eighths. That's your new problem. Again, I like to rewrite it as two plus three, and my denominator is eight because I know that's not gonna change at all. So now I'm just doing some basic addition. Two plus three is five, 
and my denominator is 8. Notice when I do this one using the LCD strategy, I don't have to ask myself if it's in simplest form because off the bat, I found the least common denominator. That was the smallest denominator that both of these would have in common. So this is already in simplest form. They have no common factors besides one. So I can box up my answer and be confident that I'm all done. I still got the same answer as I did with the, uh, the previous strategy that I showed you, but it was a little bit more efficient because it helped to ensure that the answer that I got was going to be in simplest form. So those are two examples using addition. Now we're going to do one example using subtraction. Okay, in this example, we're going to look at nine tenths. We are going to subtract two fifths from that. Now, in this example, I'm only going to focus on the LCD strategy just because I don't want this video to be too long. But know that if you're not comfortable with the LCD strategy, remember to find a common denominator. You can just multiply your two denominators together, but just make sure at the very end that you are certain that you've expressed your answer in simplest form. So because I prefer to use the LCD strategy, I'm going to go ahead and prime factor both my denominators. Two factors for 10 are going to be 5 times 2. I know that 2 is prime and 5 is prime. So my factors for 10 were 2 times 5. Prime factor 5, I should know that that's already prime, but, but just to show that, I'm going to show that that is 5 times 1. Both of those are prime, and I'm going to tell myself that my factors for 5 are 1 times 5. I'm going to check to see do I have any factors in both of those lists that can be paired up. And I do. There are two fives here, so those go together. And then you have a lonely two and a lonely one floating out there. So to find my least common denominator for 10 and 5, I'm going to do 1, which came from there, times 2, which came from there, times 5. And I'm going to multiply that out. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10. So my LCD, or my least common denominator, for those two fractions, let me erase it and rewrite it so that you can see it, my LCD will be 10, okay? So now I'm gonna manipulate my fractions. I'm gonna do whatever it is I need to do so that both of them have a denominator of 10. Now notice, lucky you, this one already has a denominator of 10, so you can just bring that down, 9 tenths. This one does not have a denominator of 10, so I'm gonna take 2 fifths, I'm going to draw my fraction bar out a little bit longer because I'm going to need to do some multiplying. I'm going to think about my basic facts and ask myself 5 times what is going to be 10. I should know that that's 2, so I'm going to multiply by 2 here. Whatever is done to the denominator must be done to the numerator. So I'm going to multiply here. 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 2 is 10. So instead of subtracting 2 fifths, I am now going to be subtracting 4 tenths because I just created an equivalent fraction. Then it just becomes a basic subtraction problem. Let me move this out of the way so that we can see our new problem. 9 tenths minus 4 tenths is going to equal blank. And I like to rewrite it as 9 minus 4 over 10 because my denominator is going to stay 10. 9 minus 4 is going to be 5. My denominator is 10. Then I'm going to ask myself, is that in simplest form? And even though I use the LCD strategy in this one, it's still not in simplest form. So you always want to ask yourself that. Using the LCD strategy just helps to ensure that you get to the simplest form in a more efficient manner, but you still always want to check before you box it up, is that in simplest form? And it's not. Although five is a prime number, these two, the numerator and your denominator do have a common factor besides 1, and that common factor would be 5. 5 goes into 5 one time, and 5 goes into 10 two times. Now I know that that is in simplest form because both of those numbers are prime, so they have no common factor besides 1. So now I can feel comfortable, I can box it up, I can put a happy face because I am done. Because now I know that 9 tenths minus 2 fifths is going to be written as 1 half in simplest form. So those are your three examples. I'm going to flip the camera around and give you some closing thoughts and then we will be all done with this lesson. 
All right, now that you guys have had a couple of examples, just a few reminders as we start our journey into adding and subtracting fractions and our work with fractions in general. Just remember when it comes to adding and subtracting fractions, you can never add or subtract them until they have like denominators. And in order to solve that problem or create like denominators, you're either going to find a common denominator between the two denominators of your original fractions or you're gonna be looking for a least common denominator. Those are the two strategies that we focused on today. Either way, whichever strategy you use, you always wanna make sure that at the very, very end, you are making sure that you've expressed your fraction in simplest form, meaning that your numerator and denominator have no common factors besides the number one. Once you can get to that point, then you know your fractions are in simplest form and you can be done with the problem in general. Uh, just remember, in my opinion, it's always best if you can to try and use the strategy where you uh, find the least common denominator because that makes the simplifying process at the very end much easier. Also, lastly, with your work with fractions, whether you're adding them, subtracting them, the key is to keep your work organized because eventually they're tends to be a lot going on in one problem. So you wanna make sure that your work is neat and organized so that your thought process can be clearly followed for yourself or for me if I'm trying to look at your work. So that is it. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up so that I know to keep making them. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you are aware as soon as I upload new videos for these math lessons. And that is it for today. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone.